Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,262. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't look around once in a while, you just might miss it. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special returning guest here calling in from my hometown, La Jolla, California, Jeremy Hunziker. Hey, Jeremy, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm buckled up and ready to go. All right. Jeremy Hunziker is a sales specialist at O'Gara, La Jolla, where they sell high-end exotic sports cars. He is originally from the East Coast and moved to California seven years ago after circumventing the globe prior to a college graduation. An avid motorsport enthusiast, Jeremy jumped at the opportunity to work at O'Gara La Jolla as it fulfilled his dream to work within the exotic automotive industry. And representing such prestigious brands as Lamborghini, McLaren, Bentley, Bugatti, and Rolls-Royce. He loves the ocean and goes diving and surfing often during the summer and winter months. He is also a passionate content creator and is often found with camera in hand. His favorite supercar currently is the Lamborghini Aventador S that he describes as being the pinnacle of your everyday supercar form and function. Indeed. So, Jeremy, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Before we jump into the questions, would you take a moment, share a little bit more about your career and your passion for very cool cars? Yeah, I mean, I love, I mean, thank you so much for having me back on, Mark. I mean, it's an absolute pleasure to be back on the show. But, uh, you know, I've, I've loved the car since I was a kid. I mean, it, it really started with, you know, my father showing me movies, you know, growing up, you know, the Cannonball Run series one and two. I know they made a third one that wasn't very good, but uh, the first two were incredible, especially with an all-star cast. It's been a, quite the journey. I'm very thankful to be where I am now. Uh, moved out to L.A. and just uh, did some time as a purchasing uh, manager for a Japanese company and then went from there. It literally typed Indeed into indeed.com that you know just the word lamborghini and ended up uh, yielding some job results and uh worked in that bdc in santa monica for the o'gare coach company after you know getting a job acceptance and uh uh-huh. really just thankful to, to represent all these brands and and to to be where i am now working out of beverly hills westlake and then now here in la jolla absolutely and of course you guys are an integral part of supporting the la jolla concord and i'll be down there uh, mid-April to enjoy that event. I'll see you and your team and a whole bunch of other great people, some of which have been guests on Cars Yeah this week to promote the La Jolla Concours. But today we're talking about you. And as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote or a mantra. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars Yeah. So Jeremy, take the wheel. Yeah, of course. Um, one of the, you know, along the lines of the movies that kind of inspired me growing up, I loved Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, who can't? Oh, yeah. Um, and, and one of the one quotes that really stood out to me is uh, when he says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't look around once in a while, you just might miss it. And I think, <laughs> you know, that stands out to me because I think a lot of the times we get so caught up in our day to day that we forget to make the most of the moment. So, you know, I, I think it's it's really critical that we kind of take a step back and don't get caught, you know, so caught up in, in what's happening ahead as opposed to just kind of making the most of, uh, of the moment that we're given. You know, there's uh, an old saying, it's a kind of a Confucius type thing. I can't remember the original person who quoted, but it was, uh, if you live in the past, you're usually stressed. If you live in the future, you're uncertain. But if you live in the now, you're at peace with yourself. And I realize, you know, we have to look forward all the time and people are always trying to say look down the road, look down the ro- road, look down the road, but sometimes yeah, it is good to just stop and realize what have I got today? Be grateful for what you have. And in the case of you're working around beautiful cars in a beautiful city in a place where it's sunny all the time. I mean, <laughs> did you ever find yourself when you go to work and you walk amongst all these cool cars taking it for granted and you have to stop yourself and think of that thought that you just shared? No, it, it, it happens all the time. It's, it's actually kind of funny that you bring it up because I have to, we're all guilty of it. I think, you know, when you do something or you're around something long enough, it, it kind of becomes second nature. And I remember, I look back on the times when I was a kid and I would come into the, you know, the different dealerships, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and just kind of fair and awe or set a car alarm off. But now here I am 
you know, running to our key machine just to grab keys to show a client or to take a car to an event or just go out and do a photo op. And and I, I have to pinch myself and I have to say, wow, you know, like the vision that I had as a kid, you know, everything that I ever wanted is, is happening right now. And so, you know, it, it really, it's, a, it's almost an overwhelming emotion and feeling when you realize that what you envisioned for yourself has actually happened. And so as always, incredibly thankful. Yeah, that's the best way to be. It's fun when you finally realize the secret sauce of life, and that is find a way to work in a career that surrounds you with the things you're passionate about. And uh, boy, I've had 1,262 guests on the show here now. We'll back one off since you've been on twice, but it's the hey. same thing all the time. Is uh, Yeah, be grateful for what you have and uh, enjoy every single moment. You you alluded to the answer to this next question, and that is a story that instigated your personal passion for cars. Can you kind of walk us through that moment in your life as you remember it, that pivotal moment when you knew you were indeed going to be a car guy for life? Oh, for sure. And it, it always makes me smile because, you know, I, I tell the story so often because people want to know, you know, why or what it was that did it to me. And, and I was probably eight years old. My father was really, you know, into, you know, the latest and greatest technology at the time for like, you know, watching movies or listening to music, et cetera. So he had like, a, you know, a man cave in our basement. It was the multimedia setup. He had a really epic surround sound Bose system, big television. I think, yeah, this is probably 1998. And um, he was downstairs testing the sound out, but he was using uh, the Cannonball Run. It was the second movie, interestingly enough, the one that features, I mean, both Cannibal Run and Cannibal Run 1 and Cannibal Run 2 feature a Lamborghini Countach racing sure. through the desert uh, and cops chasing after it with uh, two beautiful women driving behind the wheel. But it wasn't so much, you know, about who was driving the car, et cetera. It was the sound of the V12 that got me. I, I, I heard it from all the way upstairs <laughs> and I came down and my dad was like, hey, check this out. I just stood there with my dad in complete silence as we're both watching the intro of this movie. And it just starts out, you know, the sun coming up, it's in the desert. And just that Countach going through the gears. When I heard the sound of that naturally aspirated 12 cylinder motor, I was like, whatever that is, and, you know, whatever <laughs> I, I want have it. to do <laughs> to do that in my life is exactly what I want to do. I got to figure it out. I got to, I got to make that happen. And so, yeah, I would say that that was definitely. You know, seeing that intro, seeing those amazing movies, uh, and they just don't make them like that anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, that set it off. Yeah, I would agree with you. You know, I just had a conversation this morning with a past guest of mine, Rachel Clegg. She's a very, very unique automotive artist who produces these calendars. I can't even begin to describe them. I'll just suggest that my listeners go to my website, type in C-L-E-G-G, -G, Rachel Clegg. And you look her up and she's working on a new series of paintings. This is very fascinating that you bring this up today because she wants to record engine sounds and then create a visual waveform of that sound and relate it to the car in her artwork and then create shirts and paintings and prints and things like this. And we were talking about, she called me because she said, Mark, you know cars. I want you to kind of tell me the cars I should be focusing on. And I said, you know, cars these days, nowadays, they don't sound that great anymore. There's a few, but when you go back in time, and you said it yourself here, Jeremy, those old V12s in the Countach, the Jaguar, I mean, the race cars, the Ferraris, it's it's something that we don't hear anymore because of rules and regulations. I get it, you know, sound and all this kind of stuff. But let me take this forward real quick. And I know this is going off my normal topic, but I find it fascinating. Is there a car today, if you could pick one, that instills that same raw feeling that Countach gave you back in the eighties that would, ex that excite you today. Just one that, that and I'm talking about just sound, not the visual, just close your eyes. It drives down La Jolla Boulevard by your shop there. Which car would it be? The one that I've driven would be the Aventador S. And I love that, the sound of that natural estrated. But I do want to touch on the fact that Apollo, the creator of the Gumper, did come out with a new vehicle called the IE, the Intensa Emozione. And so uh -huh. that being a naturally aspirated hypercar, um, if you haven't seen a video of that car doing a flat out top speed run, you have to, because it is that okay. exact same high pitched whine scream that you're, you yeah. know, all, we're all accustomed to with the naturally aspirated 12 cylinders that literally makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we went down a different path there. I like that, though. <laughs> Very cool. 
You know, it reminds me of the F1 days when Ferrari was, even the V10s, but the V12s. Oh my gosh, just, I used to call it tearing canvas, just the ripping sound when those things would go by. Just, I love it. I love it. Well, the best. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven out, Jeremy. I want you to talk about a big challenge in your life, your career, whatever it may be. But more importantly, take us through that time that was a challenge, but tell us what you learned from it, because that's how we glean the best out of a bad situation. And more importantly, how did that experience help you move forward and gain even more momentum in your business, your career, your life? Yeah, no, um, I would say moving to Los Angeles uh, at 22 years old with a dream, really just kind of not knowing what the road ahead yielded for me. You know, I I had probably $1,500 in my bank account at the time. I had to live in an extended stay hotel. I had to find a place to live. I couldn't afford to live, you know, on my own in LA. As as you know, it's extremely expensive. And, um, you know, I I had to, you know, search on Craigslist for like room stays and things like that. I ended up landing a really, really nice guest house in Palos Verdes and could work as a purchasing manager in Torrance. And nice. um, that's not a bad place to live. Exactly. And so, I mean, really just kind of turning out like it was it was kind of crazy. I'll never forget, you know, when I landed that situation, I went and interviewed with the uh, the owner of the home who's renting out the guest house. And I, I couldn't believe that, you know, all the pieces were falling into place. And so it was really just about staying focused and dedicated that got me to where I am today. And uh, looking back over the journey, uh, it just makes me smile, you know. Just to know that when you put your mind to something and you really believe in yourself and that you can do it and you have that vision for yourself and you just push through those hard times when you think that you might not be able to make it through, they're all tests. You know, life is a big test. And if you can pass those tests, you're well on your way to, to what you had envisioned for yourself. Absolutely. And it doesn't hurt if you're a hardworking, uh, well-represented uh easy to communicate young man so that that homeowner felt confident that he wasn't renting his guest home to some Yahoo that was going to cause problems for him <laughs> either. So, uh, you know, you got to be professional, straightforward, you know, intelligent, know how to communicate and respectful that that's somebody else's property. So kudos to you for landing that gig because, yeah, Palos Verdes Estates, nice neighborhood, most definitely one of the nicest ones up there in that area. And to be able to work, live there and work close to where you were working, Torrance's not that far away. So very cool. Well, let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your own personal first special vehicle. The first car that came into your life, maybe it's a car that you saved and saved and bought and maybe share a memory you have about that ride. Yeah, we inherited a 1993 Ford Mustang 5.0 liter Fox body convertible white with red interior from my grandparents. Mind you, it did have the five point pony rims on it. And if you're unfamiliar with that car, it's extremely tail happy. It's a very, very powerful V8 up front. And I say tail happy because there's no weight in the back to keep those tires on the ground. And I learned how to drive manual in that car. My dad showed me and I'll never forget we went to go. My dad was teaching me how to drive manual, but we went to one of the neighborhoods where a lot of my friends lived and I was skateboarding at the time. And we went into the park there, I guess, and inside the park parking lot. You know, there's islands around with trees and planters and things like that. And so uh, my dad driving the car as I'm sitting passenger, he was picking me up shortly after, you know, we had gone and run a route. He revved up the motor, dropped the, you know, dumped the clutch in first gear. And we were literally fully lit, burning out in place. And then the car started to move forward. It started moving forward. My dad turned the wheel. We started drifting around one island, and then we drifted around the second island, and then we drifted straight, and then took a right, and then completely burned out all the way out of this park. Holy park cow! In, in the neighborhood, and I mean, my dad was a stunt man in the early '80s, and he did these kinds of things with you know a bunch of different cars. But I think that that really definitely kind of fueled my passion for just how extreme and how cool yet how, you know, lethal and, you know, I mean, you have to respect these cars, but I was just in awe of my dad's ability to to drive. I am not going to on record say that I had a couple of moments in that car myself with uh, letting those tires go, but uh, it was a very, I'm sure you never did that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm I'm wondering what your dad said after that. I'm I'm hoping he said, son, don't ever do that. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, the showman he is, uh, it was, he definitely told me, obviously, that, that that would be something to do in an open parking lot. but uh, Somewhere, yes. Yeah, not on the streets. 
Oh my gosh, what what an indoctrination. Well, is there a car you've sold that really gives you some seller's remorse in your mind? You're not that old of a guy, so I don't know, maybe you haven't let a big one go yet, but uh is there a remorse story? No, I mean, so there was I mean, not really a like a buyer's remorse. It's, it's interesting because I shared the Mustang with my brothers and more so my younger brother had that car for a while, but my main car that I drove through high school all the way through until just last year was a an 06 Dodge Magnum that was my dad's company car that he ended up, uh-huh. you know, giving to me. I ended up helping pay him, you know, a little bit for the vehicle and it became mine. And sadly, uh, I mean, that car had been through all my times in LA, you know, through high school, through college. It died on the side of the road in PCH with 210,000 miles on the dash. That was it. So, Gave up the goat. <laughs> yep. Yep. Had to let go of the Magnum. And now I'm in my uh, Toyota Tacoma, which is technically what I, it was like my dream car right now. So I'm thankful. I love my TRD yeah. Sport. Yeah, not bad. So Jeremy, what has you excited and fired up these days about O'Gara, La Jolla, and all the different divisions of O'Gara Motor Group? Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you asked. Um, you know, we've taken on a lot of different brands here in the La Jolla area. This past November, we just acquired McLaren. So we're very excited to have the brand here in, in San Diego area. You know, obviously, we cater to Bentley, Rolls-Royce, Bugatti, and Lamborghini as well. Our sister store in Beverly Hills is the number one McLaren selling dealership, as well as MSO retailer in North America at this very moment. So very, wow. very, very excited about that. And then we may be acquiring McLaren at our Westlake facility as well. So Rolls-Royce, Bentley across both Beverly Hills and Westlake, uh, Lamborghini and Beverly Hills as well, and amongst a host of other brands, including Koenigsegg, Rimac, and Pinaferina. That being wow. said, yeah, right now I've been uh, doing a lot of PR work, including you know being on this podcast. Um, I've worked just recently with Doug DeMuro on a uh, personal kind of uh, through the dealership review of the McLaren 720S. So we're very excited about that as we're trying to fire up a YouTube page for the company as well. So kind of working with some of those bigger names out there in the industry. So a very exciting time indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And what has you so excited about participating in the La Jolla Concours? What what can we expect to see there on the lawn? Yeah, so right now uh, we do have our 720S Fighter demo in stock. Uh, we're going to have that out on the lawn. Uh, we are trying to acquire a Bugatti Chiron at the time being. Just, uh, you know, always really exciting to have a Bugatti on site just because of how you know few there are in the world. Um, and then yeah. we'll also be unveiling the all-new Bentley Continental GT convertible as well as having the all-new Bentley Continental GT Coupe on site as well. So a very, very exciting time to show clients who are more familiar with the 10-plus years of the running Continental model C8 completely newly redesigned uh, Continental GT. So really, really great format. The Concours is for us to showcase all of our new and latest and greatest models uh, in the industry. Absolutely. This is very cool. And I remind our listeners that you can learn more about the La Jolla Concours at LaJolliaConcours.com. Make sure that you join us on the lawn there. I'll be there. You can walk up to Jeremy and say, hey, I, I heard you on Cars. Yeah, very <laughs> cool. Show me some of your cars. And uh, maybe somebody will open their checkbook and buy one from you, too. That'd be very nice. Very, very cool. So, Jeremy, up next is the last lap. Before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. What's the worst thing for your car's interior? No, it's not that milkshake the kids spilled in the back seat. It's the sun. Harmful UV rays cook your automobile's interior hour after hour when it's parked outside, even on a cloudy day. What's the solution? Covercraft sunscreens. They protect your dash, seats, and interior finishes from those damaging UV rays while keeping the interior temperature tolerable, even on the hottest summer days. No more painfully sizzling seats and steering wheels for you. They unfold quickly and easily install, stay where you put them, and are custom patterned for an exact fit. The foam core acts as a cooling insulator, and you can get yours in different colors and finishes, and they even fold up easily and store under your seat or on the floor. I've used Covercraft sunscreens for years, and they are a fast and easy solution that protect my beloved cars when they're not in the garage. Learn more and order yours at Covercraft.com. Want to protect your entire vehicle? Get a car cover from Covercraft. They have those too. That's Covercraft.com, and tell them Mark sent you. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of 
thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. Hey, Mark Green here from the Cars Yeah podcast. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? That's right. Cars Yeah is now on MAV TV. I visit some of the past Cars Yeah guests and take you along for the ride. Go to MavTV.com to learn more where you can enjoy Cars Yeah TV. MAV TV is also available on DirecTV, Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through MavTV.com online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, Jeremy, we're back, and I have a very introspective question for you. I'm going to put you on this psychological couch here and say, Jeremy, if you came back tomorrow manifested as a car, what would Jeremy be and why? And it's not what you want to be. It's how you perceive yourself as a vehicle. I would probably go ahead and say the Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. And, you know, I know that's an interesting pick, but... I think that that vehicle, and, and with regards to me, I would say that it's a the look of the car is a bit refined. It's a little low key. I try to stay low key myself, but at the same time, it does you know entertain the wild side. And so, I mean, I deal with extreme sports, uh, an extreme you know naturally aspirated twelve cylinder motor with all that power to the rear wheels. It just kind of fits the profile, you know. I mean, James Bond drove an Aston Martin. I know not the V12 Vantage, of course, but it's just kind of, I feel like between me and the car, you know, I like to be refined. I like to be clean, dialed. It's kind of that James Bond persona-esque I, I'm kind of getting at. But, um, yeah, essentially. Nice. Always on nice. a mission. Always, always on, a mission. on a mission. And shaken, not stirred, of course. Hey, hey All there right. he is. <laughs> All right, James, Jeremy, we're entering the last lap, and I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Seat time. Seat time, seat time. And that's, yeah. you know, just no matter where you are or, or where you're at, you know, just as, mo- as long as you're getting seat time, as long as you're getting experience, you're making progress and nothing happens overnight. Absolutely. I'm going to throw a question at you here because. This will be a little uh, interesting. I usually don't do this, but I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm in your showroom. I'm looking at a car that I'm in love with, but I don't need it. I don't need an exotic car. I can have a regular straight car, street car, if you will. Why should I buy that car, Jeremy? Because did you have a dream about that car? Did you have, I mean, were you passionate about that car at one point in time? And, you know, you can't take money with you at the end of the day, but you can spend the money that you have now to enjoy, you know, the little things in life. You have to, we can't take anything with us, but if there's something that you've had your eye on, or if, there's, if you had ever entertained having a vehicle like this, why not, you know, indulge yourself? It, it's really a, an indulgence. You know, nobody needs these cars. You know, nobody needs these cars, but it, it's, it's entertaining. It's giving, it's indulging yourself in, in, a, in a pleasure. Fulfilling a dream. You know, I used to say something to my mom when I say, mom, I really need that. And she goes, no, you don't need it. You want it. And I'd say, yeah, Mm -hmm. but I want what I need and I need what I want. That's usually when I got sent to my room. But (laughs) it kind of makes sense with what you just said. So, yeah, treat yourself to something special. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? Dedication and vision. And just kind of as everything unfolds, just taking it as it comes and and really just going back to, to living in the moment as best I can. There you go. How about a resource? Is there one in particular that you'd like to share that you're really fond of? Yeah, of course. I mean, our own social media websites uh, at, you know, San Diego McLaren, at O'Gara Coach La Jolla. I'm a huge fan of the DuPont Registry. Uh, I've been reading the magazine since I was a kid. So really just kind of I've been inspired by that publication. And, uh, you know, now having them as a, as a follower to me on social media and uh, being in touch with the, the family behind the DuPont Registry, it's really just been, um, you know, quite the journey. And I would say that that's yeah. a great resource for all things automotive. There you go. Now, if I could uh, arrange for you to sit down and have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Steve McQueen. Ah, that'd be cool. The king of the cool. Man. Yeah, yeah. The, man, the man's a legend. And I'm sure, I mean, gosh, just to sit him down and hear some of his stories, I would just 
I'd be quiet. I mean, I'd be quiet the whole time. I would be an open ear. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Well, I'll tell you, I've had his son, Chad, on the show twice now, and uh, uh, he's a great listen. So any of you that missed my talks with Chad, go back and uh, listen to those. They're both on the Carja website. How about a book? Is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy? Yeah, it still stands out to me. And The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein is, is obviously a very you know profound book in so many ways because it, it kind of harks on life and puts you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of life's arduous, uh, the realities of life into a allegorical outlook or just a perspective on life through the eyes of a dog. And so I, yeah. I really enjoyed that book. It's That's a great, great book. It's the most recommended book here on Cars. Yeah. I've had Garth as a guest on the show. So if any of you listeners missed my talk with him, please go back and find it on the Cars Yeah website. And of course, they're making a movie about it that should come out, I think this year, maybe next year, we'll see. But I'm really curious to see how they handle that because it's a great book. It's also a great audio book to listen to as well. Really and I'll remind is. our listeners, yeah, it's just awesome. I'll remind our listeners, you can find all of these great resources on Jeremy's very own Cars yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Jeremy Huntsiker, and that page will pop right up. All right, Jeremy, we're up to the checkered flag, and this is a bit of a doozy for a guy who hangs around with a lot of cool cars. Today, I'm going to buy you a cool collector car. Old or new, doesn't matter what it is, but there's a couple rules to this game. One is you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You have to drive it. No garage queens allowed here. And it's the only cool collector car you can have parked in your garage. So what am I buying today? There's so many out there, but you know, it really always comes back to the 1967 330P4. Only four were made. (laughs) Ouch. You're an expensive date, my friend. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's a dream car. I mean that that's one of the most beautiful cars ever built, I think. Uh it's just absolutely fantastic. Now this is interesting. A young man who works amongst some very high end current day exotics that you went for that car. That's a little bit before your time too. So what is it about that car that really pulls on your heartstrings? You know, we were talking about it earlier. We touched on, you know, that they don't make the cars the way that they used to. And so I come to find that, you know, when I bring in an older trade or if I drive a car from the early 90s or the late 80s, I get this nostalgic feeling. And I think the older the car, the stronger the feeling. And I think about the times and I'm a, I was, I'm a historian out of college. And so I put myself in those shoes of all the people that have driven these cars, you know, over the time. And I, I almost feel like you can, it's almost like a flip book through history, just sitting in the seat of one of those cars. And not only that, but a car like the, what I can only imagine this car with that natural aspirate 12 cylinder and how it would just be such a visceral, nostalgic, the smells of the fuel. Just, I like the, the, I like having to work for my drive. I like having to, to not have everything be so automated or or being catered to me. I want rawness. And if that car can provide that for me, then that's just, that's the dream. I'm pretty sure that car can provide plenty of rawness for you, Jeremy. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You know, I believe uh, one of my past guests, Jim Glickenhaus, has one of those cars. It actually has a New York license plate. He actually drives that thing around. Um, Yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful car. Well, I'll get to work. Let me see if I can find one for you. This may take a little while, so uh, don't hold your (laughs) breath. But uh, maybe I can find one in time to uh, drive it down the coast to the La Jolla Concord and visit you there at O'Gara. Oh my gosh, Jeremy. Yeah, you've taken me on a great ride today. Thanks for coming back and being my guest here on Cars Yeah, and thanks for sharing your journey with the Cars Yeah listeners. Before I let you go, is there one parting piece of wisdom or guidance you might offer before you head up the coast highway in your very own 67 330p4 Ferrari? It's all about the journey. It's not about the destination. You got to enjoy the ride and live in the moment. It's all we have. Yeah. And tell our listeners, uh, again, how can they learn more about O'Gara? Yeah, uh, so we have a really big social media presence uh, on Facebook. You can find us at O'Gara La Jolla and on Instagram at O'Gara La Jolla. You can also look in Beverly Hills at O'Gara. Uh, Beverly Hills, we have M- uh, San Diego McLaren um, on Instagram, Facebook, at Lamborghini La Jolla, at Bentley La Jolla, um, at Rolls-Royce La Jolla, and uh, at Bugatti La Jolla. A lot of resources there. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure I put all those links on Jeremy's show notes page so you can find him. Check out O'Gara, O'Gara La Jolla, and all the other parts of the business. I mean, it's expanded just so much in the last year. 
not to mention all the time it's been in business. So congratulations to you and your team, what you're doing there. And big plans to join Jeremy and me at the La Jolla Concours on April 12th, 13th, and 14th, where you'll enjoy some fun-filled days along with along the beautiful Pacific Ocean uh, coast there in La Jolla, Elling Browning Scripps Park. If you want to learn more, go to LaJollaConcours.com. Jeremy, thanks again for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at the La Jolla Concours. Sounds great, Mark. I really appreciate you having me back on. You're welcome. Thank you. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.